Hello to you out there. Today I'm making uh, this video uh, to share with you my experience and also to give you some tips about taking the uh, the Red Hat Certified Engineer exam. Uh, that is the ES300. Uh, I have taken this exam and I passed and uh, I felt like let me share my tips and uh, experience with you in case you are preparing for this exam. So the number one tip will be definitely be familiar with the objectives of this exam. This exam is uh, a hands-on based exam. It is not multiple choice. Uh, so be familiar. The the objective are listed, you know, in this URL. If you can see, um, you know, you, you have to be familiar with all of this because the questions can come from any of the exams or uh, from any of the objectives. Sorry. So this is the URL. So the second tip uh, will be make sure you practice, you know, until you are comfortable with each and every of the objectives. Uh, there is no substitution for practice uh, because every from the beginning to the end, you have to be uh, doing some sort of configurations. Uh, so the third tip, uh, my advice would be, you know, use either the Red Hat Enterprise Linux or CentOS. If you don't have a lot of money to buy subscription for Enterprise Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS is good enough. I use CentOS during my practice and uh, I passed, so uh, I think that it should be good enough. Uh, and also, you can use VMs, uh, that is virtual machines. If you are not, if you don't have uh, a lot of physical machines, uh, VMs are good enough. Or uh, you can use VMs on your virtual box or OpenStack instances, or even maybe AWS. If you don't have any of those, if you, you can. Just use AWS create two instances and use it for your practice. Um, so the fourth tip that I have is make sure your typing is at least you know good enough. You don't have to be the best uh, typist or typer, but make sure your typing make sure you type fast enough. Make sure you you practice typing because. You are going to you'll be doing a lot of typing, and uh, you have two servers in this exam. You have server one and server two. Make sure you are aware of which server you are on when you are doing your configuration, or uh, so that you don't do you don't misconfigure, or uh, you'll be told to configure an IP address on server one, another IP address on server two. Make sure you you are aware on which server you are. So my fifth tip will be get make sure you know how to use the wget or the curl command to download files. You'll be asked to download uh, a lot of files, or you are going to be told that oh certain configuration is located in a certain URL. You have to use ews2 to get those configurations or files. Uh, also. Make sure you know how to create your own repo because you, I mean you are going to give be given. Well, in my case, I was given a URL to use as the repo, but I needed to add, you know, the repo to create a, a repo in the yum repo or uh, directory, and you may also want to turn off the GPT checking. Uh, you know for for your installations because you are going to you will need to install a couple of packages in this exam definitely so i think the next one i have is make sure your slnos is in enforcing mode at the end of the exam if your if your slnos is not in enforcing mode uh, i think you are going to be penalized heavily maybe even it may result in a failure so uh, make sure you take care of that. Uh, the next one that I have is when if you have a problem, don't hesitate to contact the proctor. 
or I actually had a problem in one in my exam so I actually took the exam twice the first time I had a problem with the VMs the VMs froze and I was actually you know at the end almost at the end of the exam I was like about uh, on the last question and the, v the VMs just froze on me and uh, I, I wasn't able to get it back so I had to come back to take the exam uh, the next one I have is don't forget your log files in case of troubleshooting in case something is not working for you maybe your HTTPD your SMTP or DNS or iSCSI NFS Samba don't forget to look into the log files for clues uh, I think the last but not the least is uh, make sure your configurations are persistent uh, it's very important because if your, ser uh, your servers are going to be rebooted, if you lose the configuration, it's just as if you never did them in the first place. Uh, when you use the firewall CMD command, don't forget the permanent option. Uh, make sure everything is written into a file before you reboot. Because if you reboot and you lose the configuration, uh, that will be on you. So. Uh, I think these are the little tips I have. I hope it helps you if you are planning to take the exam. And thank you for watching. Bye.